Hello and welcome to our demonstration of spalling in massive rock under high stress. This project was developed by master students Ryan Zebarth and Saeed Nasiri for the Mine 6002 Mine Excavations course at Dalhousie University under the supervision of Dr. Andrew Corkum. In this study, we'll be analyzing the failure mechanism known as spalling, which is common in good mass of rock under high stress conditions. Spalling is the concentration of thin slabs of rock breaking off the tunnel wall and have a direct relationship to the principal stresses in the cross section of a tunnel. The theory behind the experiment is based on the 2009 work by Martin and Christensen and the 2007 paper by Diedrichs. Background. Martin and Christensen note when the tangential stresses on the boundary of an excavation reach and exceed the crack initiation, the potential for spalling exists. Spalling will result in two diametrically opposite V-notch shapes being developed with the notch tips pointing in the direction of the minimum principal stress. Jointing and stress condition greatly affect the potential for brittle failure. In intermediate stress, it can be seen the potential for brittle failure exists in highly fractured to massive rock, while at high in situ stress, brittle failure occurs in moderately fractured to massive rock. The study will be looking at massive rock in intermediate to high stress. Diderichs created a relationship between the uniaxial compressive strength and tensile strength to determine the likelihood for spalling, and in the top right corner the ratio can be compared to the GSI to determine the potential for bradal failure. Design The design for the mold was to have inner dimensions of 305 mm by 305 mm by 122 mm and a 60 mm hole through the center to allow a piece of PVC pipe would be placed through. The mold was constructed with plywood and PVC pipe to create the excavation. Once the mold was created, the ingredients for the plaster were measured and combined to create a mixture with a consistency similar to pancake batter. Once the plaster was mixed to a proper consistency, the paste was poured into the mold and leveled. Once cured, the block was loaded under high stress in the instrument press to induce spalling behavior. Plaster material. The plaster used was a combination of plaster of Paris, water, and diatomaceous earth, known as cellite. The ratio of the material was 71 to 32 to 1 in weight, and combined they had a density of 2.64 grams per centimeter cubed. Before the mold was created, it was important to determine the material properties of the plaster. To do this, cores were created and prepared following ASTM standards. Three samples were created for the UCS test. However, one chipped during cutting, making it unable to test. From the two cores, it was determined the plaster had a UCS of 3 MPa and the Young's modulus was 800 MPa. To determine the tensile strength, the Brazilian test was implemented, and it was determined the tensile strength of the plaster was 0.125 MPa. The plaster is a massive material with no joints. Therefore, the GSI was determined to be between 80 and 90. The ratio of the UCS and tensile strength in connection with the GSI show there was potential for brittle failure. The graph from Diedrichs also shows high potential for spalling, but the energy is quite low. Therefore, spalling is expected to not be as aggressive. Numerical modeling. A numerical model in RS2 was developed to simulate the expected stresses acting on the plaster block. The model was designed with a fixed top and bottom and free sides, which was believed to best represent how the block would react in the instrument press. The rock parameters were the values determined earlier and for the stress field, the maximum principle was the crack initiation, and the minimum principle stress was zero since it has no confinement. From the model, it can be seen the stress builds up on the sidewall along the spring line, where leading to the initial predictions that spalling will occur in this location, around 0.4 of the UCS as is commonly suggested in industry. Based on the model, it was suggested a minimal amount of lateral stress was created from the vertical stress 
similar to electrostatic stress caused by gravitational loading of 0.1 MPa. Laboratory experiment. A uniform load will be applied to the test block at a rate of 0.35 millimeters per minute. Based on the numerical model and theory of brittle failure, the spalling is expected to happen along the spring line in the sidewalls of the tunnel. The test block was loaded into the press, and the video that follows provides a visual of massive rock under high stress. As the block is initially being loaded, it can be seen a crack starts to begin in the lower right corner of the test block. Following this, the stresses show a drop since the block failed, but that leads to the stresses redistributing towards the excavation. From this redistribution, it can be seen spalling begins in the right side wall and a crack propagates to the top of the block in the direction of the major principal stress. Finally, a crack is developed on the left side of the block and curves in to join with the spalling that is occurring on the left side wall. The spalling intensifies on both the right and left side of the, of the tunnel until complete failure happens on the right side of the block and the press is stopped. From the test, the following stress strain curve was developed and two interesting points were found. First, the block failed at a lower stress than the UCS, which may have been a result from the curing time or the levelness of the top and bottom of the block. Secondly, spalling was experienced at a reading of 1.6 MPa. At this vertical stress, a maximum tangential stress of almost 5 MPa would exist, which seems unusually high compared to the spalling observed in the test block. This makes one wonder what the actual maximum and minimal principal stresses actually are. A close-up shot shows spalling that occurs in the test block on both the left and right side of the block as expected. It can be seen through further analysis that the crack from spalling propagates entirely through the block allowing it to be easily snapped in two. The crack noticed on the left during the test was initially thought to have been directly related to the spalling on the left sidewall. However, from further analysis, it is believed this crack is related to the block failure and redistribution of stresses towards the excavation. The crack that was created from spalling in the left sidewall was more visible once it was removed from the press. A measurement from the tunnel boundary to the notch tip in the right sidewall determined the depth of failure was 3 millimeters, and the image shows a ruler next to the failure for scale. Data analysis. The depth of spalling was calculated using the measure of the stress where spalling was experienced at 1.6 MPa. With this value, the maximum tangential stress would be 4.7 MPa, and the depth of failure was calculated to be 4.3 cm, which is off the chart for the empirical equation. The redistribution of stresses around the tunnel directly relate to the principal stresses, and it was believed from the observations of spalling the magnitude of the vertical load applied may not be the maximum principal stress. Instead, the measured depth of failure was used to estimate the maximum tangential and principal stresses acting around the tunnel, assuming a minimum principal is 0.1 MPa, based off the numerical model. It was determined that the maximum tangential stress was 1.46 MPa and the maximum principal stress was estimated to be 0.49 MPa. These calculated values were then reapplied to the numerical model and it can be seen that deviatoric stresses compare well to how the test block actually failed. As a point of interest, the model was changed from elastic to elastoplastic using the hook brown. The other notes that brittle rock does not follow a standard failure curve. However, the stresses in the elastoplastic model resemble the failure lines in the test block, which is interesting to think about. Conclusion In conclusion, this video presented an interesting approach to viewing spalling behavior in massive rock under high stress. By applying a vertical load to a plaster that mimics a mass of rock, spalling will be experienced in the sidewalls due to the fact that the maximum tangential stresses run parallel to the maximum principal stresses. 
by using the relationship between the UCS and tensile strength developed by Diedrichs, one can estimate the potential for spalling in a rock mass, and to some degree, the intensity of the spalling. However, due to the redistribution of stresses in the lab test, only the location of spalling can be estimated and not the depth, even with the empirical equations. But the maximum tangential stress can be calculated and a good estimation of the maximum principal stress can be made using the same equation. Recommendations. The model did provide good results. However, some improvements could be made to the process. The cure time of the block could be increased to a month ensuring it completely sets. Measures could be taken to ensure the top and bottom of the block are perfectly level. The amount of material around the excavation could be increased, especially in the sidewalls, to reduce the chance of early block failure on the perimeter of the block. A load could be applied to the sides providing confinement, improving the chances that the outer portion of the block does not fail. Finally, instead of using plaster of Paris for the construction of the block, it could be substituted for the product Hydrocal 105. While Plaster of Paris provides quality results, it can be seen Hydrocal 105 is substantially more brittle from the core testing and it is believed to create better results in your laboratory test. We hope you enjoyed our demonstration of spalling in massive rock under high stress and suggest you consider trying this experiment on your own with the help of the references provided.